Hi, good afternoon everyone. Welcome to the online webinar for the Recreation Master Plan and the Campground Master Plan. This session will last one hour and with questions answered at the conclusion of the 45 minute presentation. We're really glad that you're taking your time out of your busy schedules to get updates on the two plans and I hope that this session provides insights into the rigorous process the district has undertaken. In addition to the Recreation and Campground Master Plans, the district has recently completed a land acquisition plan, which you can find on our website, and we're preparing to embark on a three-year centennial celebration to commemorate the district's 100th year anniversary. The Recreation Master Plan comes from a process from developing the five-year capital improvement plan in 2011 and the need to identify compatible recreation in the district. The Campground Master Plan was developed to respond to the need to create public camping opportunities and to build off of our current youth group camping infrastructure. We believe that mission-compatible recreation, such as camping, trails, fishing, winter sports, is a critically important way that we can introduce more of our residents to the benefits of nature and begin a lifelong love of the outdoors. Since its founding in 1914, the mission of the Forest Preserve District has been to acquire, maintain, preserve lands for the pleasure, education, and recreation of the public. Okay. So just a couple quick introductions and some information about the webinar. My name is Kindy Kruler, and I'm the project manager for the Recreation Master Plan and seen as well as a team member for the Campground Master Plan. Our other presenter, who you'll hear from in just a little bit, is Ann Miller. She's Senior Planner and Project Manager for the Recreation Master Plan Consulting Team, led by Greenplay. We're really excited to provide our public meetings in this online webinar format. It allows the district to reach our constituents across um, the large county area and does not require travel time to attend meetings in faraway locations. The online meetings um, will not replace our in-person sessions, but allow us for mid-project updates. And here's a few details about today's session. The webinar is being recorded and will be posted on the website next week. And all of the phones are on mute, um, but you can submit your questions and comments via the question box in the GoToWebinar interface. I will try to answer all the technical questions about the webinar if you're having either problems um, uh, with the interface or hearing or anything else, I'll try to answer those types of questions immediately. I already see a few hands up, so just give me a minute. Um, and, but you can ask your questions um, about the presentation throughout the entire session, but we'll answer them at the end. So here's a quick um, uh, overview of our agenda for the session. We'll spend the bulk of our time at the Recreation Master Plan um, updates. And then um, I'm going to provide an overview of the campground master plan updates. Um, the campground and recreation master plans are still in the planning stage and no final decisions have been made. Throughout these processes, we've generated extensive feedback um, through um, that many of you have participated in, the random survey, focus groups, targeted outreach, and the public meetings. The comments that we've heard have been incredibly important, and you will see that the input is reflected in the final plans. Individual site plans will be required for some of the sites, such as Rolling Knolls and Jan Ryan Woods, and will involve engagement of local stakeholders and community members. The camping master plans are further along, and the priority campsites that I'm going to review in a bit will go into schematic planning in 2013 once they are finalized. And just a quick note before we start the presentation. The district's primary activities and resources are focused on conservation, and the recreation um, and campground master plans do not detract from that commitment. The two plans want to bring in new users into the district with mission-compatible recreation. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Ann, who is going to give us um, the presentation on the Recreation Master Plan. Good afternoon. Well, I'm going to be running through some slides here to provide you with some updates on the progress that we've made with the Recreation Master Plan. Many of you may have been involved throughout the process. We kicked off the project in May with the Phase 1 information gathering. As Kindy mentioned, it involved a lot of input opportunities, notably the random 
survey as well as an open on-link survey where we heard from over 6,000 people. So we've got a wonderful rich amount of input through that as well as 12 focus groups and a public meeting. And there's been ongoing input opportunities throughout the project. The second opportunity for a public meeting occurred in July with the findings where we reported some of the highlights of the survey, some of the themes that we heard from the focus groups, and also some additional research around demographics, trends, benchmarking, and looking at what other peer agencies in the region and across the country are doing so we can learn from their efforts as well. Now we're in phase three of the project and really rolling up our sleeves and looking at the input we received and the research and analysis conducted so that we can provide the district with a strategic focus and guidance on appropriate recreation within the district. In January, we'll be having another public meeting targeted on January 23rd to review the draft master plan recommendations and some highlights and again gather input and refine the plan and look to complete the plan in March. Kendi will talk a little bit more about this at the end of the presentation. As Kendi mentioned, we're guided by the mission and the recreation master plan will provide the district with that blueprint to enhance existing recreation opportunities and identify new ones compatible with the mission. There are many things that the district does really well, including partnering with volunteers and stewards to restore ecologically sensitive areas, managing hundreds of picnic groves, and maintaining multi-use and paved trails. However, one area the district would like to improve on is in getting new users out into the forest preserves, particularly in communi communities that they haven't traditionally reached well. Increased awareness about the offerings that are currently provided is one area of focus. We learned from the survey that lack of awareness was the number one reason why respondents don't use district programs and facilities. There's also a need to enhance what is currently offered, like boating, trails, and winter recreation, while adding new opportunities like family camping and even archery that are compatible with our mission and appeal to a wider audience. We're also looking at adding or enhancing a limited amount of additional recreational opportunities to supplement the focus on nature and integrate recreational opportunities with environmental education message. And these recreational offerings will have a small foot footprint and will in no way diminish the district's commitment to ecology and restoration work. Criteria, criteria for selecting sites includes places that are of low ecological value and where we can utilize existing infrastructure, such as parking lots, so areas that are already develop, developed. The debate about recreation within the Forest Preserve District has been around for a long time. In 1929, a commission recommended that the district strive for an 80-20 balance, with 80% of the land in the preserves kept in a nat as natural a condition as possible and 20% available for compatible recreation. An assessment completed as part of this recreation master plan process showed that the district is under the 20% threshold currently. The recreation master plan presentation today will focus on some recreation recreational areas where there's already some consensus around and some opportunities to expand the user base with some new opportunities. I'll start first with reviewing opportunities related to picnicking and then focus on the remaining areas listed on this slide. Picnicking is at the heart of what the district does and is one of the primary providers of picnic facilities for group gatherings in the region with 187 picnic shelters and 263 picnic groves. We've, we also looked at some opportunities to use this, these contacts with a lot of people to help get the word out about all of the opportunities and uh, ways to engage in um, nature activities as well as recreational activities by, through the permitting process, providing information to the users about what else is available surrounding that picnic grove they rent. So this was a, something that the district is now starting to do to just make more connections with a lot of users that are coming and enjoying the forest preserve. We also are looking at diversifying some shelter sizes. Right now they're all um, pretty large group shelters, so 
What about people that come in and just a drop-in activity, a small family or individual who wants to come and picnic? So we want to take a closer look at that. Um, findings, our survey indicated that picnicking ranked third highest in participation in the survey. And nationally, participation in outdoor family gatherings was the second most popular outdoor recreation activity. So we're reaching a lot of people through picnicking. Improvements that are being considered include, again, raising that aware awareness and making connections to nature and recreational amenities nearby. Maybe even offering some rental options and could be you hire, rent a naturalist to come to your family gathering and have the activities for kids and also activating kind of the groves with other recreational opportunities like volleyball. So these are some, some ideas related to picnicking. Second area of focus um, that I'll talk about is trails. Again, very central to what the district offers and where you're uniquely positioned to have play a strong role in a regional trail system with 120, over 120 miles of paved trails and over 203 miles of unpaved trails currently. Some opportunities that we identified through this process, um, going back to the issue of awareness, um, people aren't always aware where you can get on the trail, so some signage and identification of um, kind of raising awareness of the trail system through trailheads. Um, again, connectivity, signage, perhaps guided tours. Findings related to trails. Um, the survey that we conducted ranked hiking and biking as the top two activities with current, highest current participation, as well as folks that are interested in that in the future. So we know that this is at the core, and attention is deserving to really get this system and a, a district-wide trails master plan in place to help guide um, enhancements in the future that will include stronger trail connections. Again, clearly identifying trailheads. So trailheads, basically an area where you go to to get on the trail. So there's parking, there's amenities like restrooms, there's signage so you can see, okay, I can go this way or this direction, a drinking fountain so you can fill up your water ball, bottle, uh, maybe some picnic areas. Right now, um, the trailheads, there aren't too many and they're not clearly marked. And we did receive feedback and a lot of writing comments in the survey related to wanting to see more amenities associated with the trails. Also, there was some feedback in the survey about folks who maybe had some perceptions that they might not feel so safe going on the trail by themselves. So some ideas about having some guided tours, bike tours, so that maybe those first-time users who want to you know, have some reluctance to participating, could come out and discover the opportunities in the forest preserve. And then continue to work with volunteers on trail projects. Water recreation is another area where a lot is going on and the Forest Preserve District, again, is in that very unique position, having 40, 42 fishing lakes and boat launches in 15 locations along with rivers, um, three aquatic facilities. So we think that, again, there's a lot of opportunities to build on that current system and expand it through um, maybe some additional boat rental sites, um, capitalizing on all the great partnership opportunities and adding some more launches and boat houses and amenities. Also considering adding swimming beaches that's been discussed and needs further study. So the findings from the survey did show interest in water recreation and national trends show growth in kayaking. Um, kayaking participation has grown nationally by 32% in the last three years according to the Outdoor Foundation. The map that you see here on the map on the slide is the Northeastern Illinois Water Trails Map. It's a project of Open Lands, Illinois Paddling Council, and the Illinois Department of Natural Resources. It was adopted over 10 years ago. So the district is interested in using this as a base to enhance and provide some direction for the next 10 years on paddling and water recreation by creating a, a district 
um, master plan to guide enhancements there. We also think that there's some opportunities, even in the three aquatic centers, to incorporate the nature theme there. So everything that we do at the district, we want to incorporate the message of environmental education and stewardship. Winter recreation. Now, winters, we haven't had as much snow lately, but we still think this is worthy of attention. And there was quite a bit of interest expressed um, in the public input process. Currently, there's one cross-country ski rental site with some trails there in the southwest at Sagalon Nature Center. There's 10 designated sledding hills, 20 ice fishing sites, and five seasonal snowmobiling sites. Um, so with just one cross-country ski rental site, there's probably some opportunities to look at enhancing that, maybe adding snowshoeing, also expanding sledding, and perhaps identifying some ice skating areas, which are currently not designated in the district. Winter recreation, as I mentioned, rated high in the survey. And um, because Chicago is pretty flat, um, for the Forest Preserve District has some topography that is attractive to sledding and, and cross-country skiing. So specifically, we think that there's a couple sites that may lend itself to enhance winter recreation. Um, Dan Ryan Woods, Moline Knolls in the Northwest, we'll talk more about both of those sites later. And then in the south, the Swallow Cliff area. Um, the image that you see here in the top is an example of a toboggan chute that's refrigerated, refrigerated, operated by the Cleveland Metro Parks. It's a public agency in Ohio. And um, they have, again, it's, it's uh, because of the seasonality and, and the unpredictability of the snow, having a refrigerated toboggan run like this would guarantee consistent usage. This is something that is a little costlier, that is um, probably a longer term project, but could be appropriate at a, at a site like Swallow Cliff. There was quite a lot of interest and a lot of writing comments from the survey about people interested in bringing back the old toboggan areas. So we're studying the options around that. Um, and then Dan Ryan and Rolling Knolls could be uh, great opportunities for enhanced sledding. And at Rolling Knolls, there's a small um, lake pond there that could be used for ice skating. Also, there's 10 golf courses that the district owns that are operated privately. And we think um, some partnership opportunities may be possible there, as they are in other communities across the country, to have winter recreation at those sites potentially. Nature play. Nature play, play uh, a nature play space integrates natural components for structured and unstructured play and learning. These spaces can be valuable opportunities for urban kids to engage with nature by providing natural materials and other nature themed elements that will capture their imaginations and again begin that lifelong love of the outdoors that can be mentioned earlier. We think of nature play as an extension of the work of the nature centers that we're already doing. We're not, current, we're not looking at playgrounds or other excessively built environments that are something that park districts are filling, but something that really fits more closely with the mission and engages kids in ways that they're not engaged currently. Nature play could include logs and rocks that can be used as stepping stones for balancing or to build forts or dams, or designated digging areas and water play areas. It could also be as simple as a van that travels to various locations with animal pelts, fossils, and leaves, and provides kids with magnifying glasses, backpacks, bug jars, and a nature-themed scavenger hunt. There's also a movement in England with many valuable resources that are on the Forest Commission of England's website if you want to learn more about some of uh, and see some more images about what's possible here. In fact, the Forest Preserve District has a nature play area that just opened up this year at Crabtree Nature Center and was the, initiated by the, some creative staff there. And you can see some images here from that site. So 
with the, the nature deficit disorder that we've heard so much about and with so many children living in a very built environment in Chicago and surrounding areas, we think that this would be a wonderful opportunity to enhance the connection between kids and nature. There was interest also expressed in the survey, and there's limited opportunities in the region that the Forest Preserve could fit that niche. So improvements to the Crabtree Nature Center and building on the successes there. Also looking at some other additional sites, one being considered is the Dan Bryan Woods. We'll talk more, like I mentioned, um, later in the presentation about that site. Programming, so building on the Nature Center staff activities there, working with partners and expanding partnerships with Mighty Acorns, and also mobile recreational programming could be part of the mix. Arts and culture. This is a maybe a little newer area of focus for the district, and a lot of activity occurring this past year. There's just one permanent stage that the Forest Preserve has, district has now, and that's located at the headquarters office in River Forest. Um, but the district has used portable stages and movie screens to bring some programming to different parts of the county and engage new users. They really focus on integrating nature themes into these experiences. And there's many opportunities for arts and culture related partnerships. The survey showed that outdoor movies and amphitheaters ranked in the top five recreation facilities to add. And we, in the focus group that was held with art groups, there was a lot of ideas and interest expressed in how to partner with the district to expand these kinds of opportunities. Currently, there is a proposal, a request for proposal out for called Art Outside to solicit ideas from different organizations about types of um, art par partnerships. And so that will be exciting to see what comes out of that. There's been a lot of activities, like I mentioned, over the past year, such as Film in the Forest and Forest Jam programs. And to, again, these are activities that will tap into maybe some of those new users that may not come out otherwise and is an opportunity then to provide information to them about all the various kinds of activities that are taking place across the district, such as all, all of the programs and experiences through the, nature, the six nature centers and trails, all of this. So we think that the special events can really be that venue to get some of these new users um, aware of what's offered in the district. Some of the images that you see on this slide is uh, the fiddling is from the Columbia Woods Rendezvous event, and then the bottom image is from the Ri River Trail Fall Festival. The image in the center is the stage that is located in River Forest that I mentioned earlier. Also, I might point out that um, public art is another area that could be incorporated into the district. And so uh, many, you know, many other agencies such as the Forest Preserve have interesting kind of nature-related public art opportunities, and that's something to be further explored. Outdoor adventure. A variety of outdoor adventure activities can provide ways for residents to engage in healthy, fun, and challenging activities and connect with nature. These can be self-guided activities like mountain biking or facilitated activities like a ropes course. So some of the images that you see here, again, just looking at ideas of what else is out there, and not to say this may all be appropriate for the forest preserve, but for example, in Charleston, South Carolina, they have a challenge course that is, um, includes a, a small zip line, and it's run by a public agency. And it's really focused on team building communication, and it seems to be very successful for them. So some of these cases can gain, um, provide some insight on, on what could work or, or not work. 
partnerships are probably really important for the Forest Preserve to consider for some of some of any kind of adventure rec ropes course or challenge course ideas. The findings from the survey show that while outdoor, um, while adventure rec didn't rate in the, the top three activities, there was still interest in a variety of outdoor recreation activities. And national trends show that there are, you know, there's interest and there's growing participation and popularity with um, adventure related activities like mountain biking, bouldering and climbing, and ch challenge courses. Related to the campground master plan, there's some opportunities to invigorate those sites and provide day use activities, including ropes and challenge courses. So these are being considered for the Camp Pine Woods site in the north, Bullfrog Lake in the southwest. And Kindy will again highlight a few of these in her presentation on the campground master plan. Also continuing to partner with groups like the Chicago Area Mountain Bikers um, in, in the partnership in the South. There's also opportunities to um, really look at um, partnerships, especially, as I mentioned, related to adventure recreation. Portable recreation opportunities, like the image that you see here in the bottom with a slack line, these are simple, something you can just um, travel and put up and create between two trees and have a um, challenging experience. You see a lot of those around in special events that people just um, use them and um, enjoy them at the concert in the park. I've seen that quite a bit. Now finally, the concluding slides on some of these um, opportunities here, um, some other, other kinds of opportunities, archery. For example, currently the district has partnered with the Illinois Department of Natural Resources on some portable archery programs. Um, disc golf, there's actually one disc golf course. It's a fee-based disc golf course associated with the Edgebrook Golf Course in the north. That's one of the 10 district golf courses that are privately managed. And there, there are um, two off-leash dog areas currently. And fitness courses, um, Swallow Cliff in the south with the stairs off, kind of operates as a fitness walking area with the stairs, people kind of a destination area. And there could be opportunities to enhance um, the fitness activities taking place at that site. A few, wor few more words about off-leash dog areas. As I mentioned, the district has offered an off-leash dog area at Beck Lake in the northwest suburbs over the last decade. And this year, they'll be opening the second area in Bremen Grove and Oak Forest. And may consider adding one or two additional dog areas in other parts of the county in the future. We've heard from a large number of people that more off-leash dog areas, like the one at Beck Lake, and those that are widely found in other similar agent, open space agencies, county agencies across the country, are strongly desired. And um, we're looking at you know, some equity across the system, since there's one, one in the north, one in the south. It may be appropriate to identify something more central. We're also looking at adding interpretive signage so that these dog areas can provide an opportunity to educate users on the surrounding lands and hopefully inspire them to visit more of our properties. We also feel that these designated off-leash dog areas present a valuable alternative to letting people um, let their dogs run loose where they could deserve, disturb sensitive habitats or nesting birds or present safety hazards to preserve users or other wildlife. So uh, many other agencies also um, have found that dog, designated dog areas are a management strategy, again, to help alleviate some of the other concerns and damage that dogs sometimes um, make to the environment. So going back to the findings, um, archery is rising in participation, especially among young people and teens, with some of the popular uh, movies that have come out lately, lately with heroines that are archers. Um, many peer agencies are offering archery, disc golf, and dog parks. And again, that interest in some, some variety on a limited basis throughout the district. 
So improved specific improvements that are being considered, um, archery at, associated with Camp Pine Woods in the north, perhaps some fitness stations at Swallow Cliff to build on the fitness focus at that site, and identifying appropriate locations perhaps for disc golf or other uses. Again, partnerships and um, opportunities around archery and other uses are of interest. Now I'm going to shift focus and highlight a couple potential opportunity sites throughout the district. And we've kind of lumped them into four categories. Enhancement of existing activity hubs, recent acquisition, camping day uses, and previously disturbed sites. The last category includes Fullerton Woods Deep Tunnel Site and the Wolf Lake Overlook, a former Nike missile site. These two are probably longer term projects because there are issues, bigger issues of lack of access and infrastructure, but we still want to keep them on the radar screens because they're important opportunities in the future for the district. So Kendi will describe in more detail some of the campground master plan recommendations for some of these sites. The goal is to activate these sites with day uses that could be enjoyed by campers and other visitors like adventure recreation and archer, archery. And um, there's also uh, this barn here. Kendi will mention this later, but this is at the Camp Sullivan site, so incorporating heritage also into the message. In addition, there's some sites that are attractive for kind of day camps and day uses at Eggers Grove and Dan Ryan Woods, and some themes around nature, play, culture, and winter recreation at those sites. In particular, I'll focus on two sites now in my concluding slide, one on Dan Ryan Woods and the other on Rolling Knolls in the Northwest. Dan Ryan Woods is a, a very popular site that's located in the south area of the county. The pavilion in the northern part of Dan Ryan Woods is currently being renovated and can serve as an anchor for a host of activities and a welcome center for the district in Chicago. It, would serve, it could serve as a warming center for the adjacent sledding hill, a clearinghouse for nature programs across the district and kind of information sharing, and a support building for special events that could occur. This is an enclosed pavilion, and it's, again, currently being renovated. It's this image down at the bottom of the slide. In the south part of the woods, a nature play area is envisioned. Again, building off of those images that you saw from the Crabtree Nature Center and the concepts of natural um, play. It could even include uh, a tree house. Rolling Knolls is a recently purchased former golf course that's located in the northwest part of the county. The rolling topography and the existing small pond lends itself to winter recreation activities like sledding, cross-country skiing, and ice skating. The existing lodge, shown here at the bottom of the slide, could be renovated and support recreation and nature activities and be rented out for special events. Walking loops as well as nature discovery and play opportunities could also be incorporated. So this concludes the updates on the Recreation Master Plan. I'd like to turn it back over to Kendi now.
Okay. Sorry about that. Um, in addition to all of the recreation activities mentioned, this plan will also look at how to expand our existing activities like equestrian use, bird watching, and fishing. So um, we're really looking at all of our existing uses in addition, which were mentioned, um, some of them, and new uses which were also mentioned. So um, we couldn't make this presentation exhaustive, but we hope that um, in in the master plan, we'll be able to reach all of the um, existing uses and identify how we're um, enhancing, engaging, and developing these programs. So now I'm going to move on to the campground master plan. Okay. So I will review the campground master plan priority sites that are listed here. Um, the campground master planning process was la launched early last spring. and, um, and we examined camping opportunities throughout the district. We have had a series of public meetings and stakeholder interviews in the last eight months. Um, the plan today emphasizes primitive camping and has been scaled back considerably from earlier versions and reflects fewer buildings and sites. Um, the plan is nearing completion, and the draft plan will be online later this month. Um, the sites that I reviewed today are the priority campground sites that have been funded potentially through the capital improvement budget pending the plan approval. The priority campground sites will go into schematic design process after the plan is approved, and the exact siting of the infrastructure and campground components will be identified in that process. In addition to the priority campground sites, the district has longer term plans for the campground master plan that are not yet funded but may be built in the future. So I want to just run through some of the lodging types that I'm going to be mentioning in the different um, uh, slides I'll show you, in, or site plans I'll show you in just a minute. So at the top left, we have tent cabins. Tent cabins, um, um, I have canvas tents that stay up for the camping season and are maintained by the district. This option allows camping without the need to purchase a tent and is good for novice campers. Below that, we have um, tent uh, platforms, which are simple raised platforms for placing personal tents. Um, we may also go with um, just gravel type sites that don't have a um, platform associated with them, but that's still to be seen. Um, but plant, tent platforms are one of the um, uh, amenities we're looking at now. We have family cabins that will um, uh, have capacity for eight with bathrooms, and at the bottom, um, right, we have bunk houses, which will have capacity for 16 or 32 with bathrooms for group rental. So the first plan I'm going to show you is Camp Rheinberg. Um, Camp Rheinberg is um, in the um, north um, part of the um, northwest part of the county in Palatine. But before I go into reviewing this plan, I just want to give a quick overview of what you're looking at from um, a plan component. At the top right, um, we have the um, location map that shows where in the county this facility is located. Below that, we have the um, different camping components of the campground. And at the very bottom, we have the program components. And this is really where the campground master plan and the recreation master plan will connect. Um, this main map it, um, is shown as a, with an aerial as a base layer, so you can see some of the street names and location um, uh, uh, attributes. And then on top, we have the different campground component layers. Um, the legend here at the bottom shows um, where existing and proposed trails, roads, and scale. And then lastly, you can see um, you know, the, the, the roads and um, all of the components shown in full color are what we're calling the 2013 plan. These grayed out areas, and in, here is an example of a family cabin right along um, this road would be in this longer term vision. Um, so there, there are, there's, a, there's an immediate um, build, and then there's a long term vision. And that's how these plans are, are laid out. So back to Camp Reinberg. Um, it's an existing camping facility that the district is revitalizing. We're using the existing dining hall, and we propose to build eight tent cabins, 20 tent sites, and a toilet shower facility. Camp Reinberg will connect to the, an existing trail system. And possible road improvements on Quinton Road will create an underpass that will allow access for the campers to Deer Grove West. The next camp is Camp Pinewood. Camp Pinewood is located in Northbrook. And it's a wide open site. 
the former CCC camp, um, and it will accommodate, um, it will be good to accommodate large groups, and it's located between Beck Lake and the Des Plaines River. We propose to construct a new bunkhouse, eight tent cabins, 20 tent sites, and a new toilet shower facility. We will connect to the existing trail system, build a new canoe launch, and develop day use activities such as ropes courses or challenge courses. Next, we have Bullfrog. Um, Bullfrog is a new site for camping in the district in Willow Springs in the Palos area. We are proposing eight tent cabins and ten tent sites, or sorry, 12 tent sites with a toilet shower building. Um, Bullfrog Lake will focus on primitive camping and connect to existing am and amenities um, such as nearby Maple Lake that has a boat rental, um, nearby picnic shelters, and trailheads. Day uses such as winter recreation have been identified. Um, you can also see there's a program meadow for day camps and other group um, activities. There's plenty of existing parking, access to multi-use trails. And then there's also a trail connection, as you can see here, to the Little Red Schoolhouse Nature Center. This original plan called for a larger um, lar lodge facility that has now been um, taken off out of the planning process. Um, next up, we have Camp Sullivan. Camp Sullivan is another historic camp in um, Oak Forest, and the plan recommends renovation of the three existing bunkhouses, construction of 12 tent cabins, 40 tent sites, renovation of the barn, and we saw the photo of the barn before, um, and toilet and shower facilities. We plan to reorient the site and move the main access drive off of Oak Park Avenue. Um, the campground will connect into existing trails and develop more active day use opportunities with an emphasis on programming the historic barn on the site. Um, lastly, we have Shabona Woods. Shabona is located in Calumet City, and it's a former picnic grove that was recently closed. Um, we propose eight tent cabins, 12 tent sites, and a toilet facility. Um, the campground here will be primarily used for environmental outreach and be closely connected to the Sand Ridge Nature Center, which you can see is a very short distance away. Um, and then it's also um, uh, very close by to Green Lake um, Aquatic Center. In terms of next steps, um, you can see there's two timing um, that, that are laid out. As previously mentioned, the campground master plan um, is more, um, more is, is further along, and um, it will be the, the draft plan will be released, released later this month and hopefully finalized in December. The recreation master plan draft will be released in January, and the final plan will be completed in March. Our next public meeting for the recreation master plan will be on January 23rd in the evening with a location to be determined. So please save the date for January 23rd. It's a Wednesday evening. With that, I'm going to um, go back to the question box and start answering some of your questions. Um, so we heard uh, Benjamin Cox asked, um, how do we how do we know what communities have not been traditionally reached well? Um, and we based this on our survey results um, that had limited respondents from the city of Chicago and other areas. And then we also have some limited demographic information that the district collects, such as um, information from picnic permits. Um, Benjamin also mentioned that there's a snowshoe and ski rental at Beverly Bike and Ski next to Dan Ryan Woods, which is a really helpful amenity to know about and make sure um, that uh, that's an amenity and a, and a concessionaire that can be used at Dan Ryan Woods. Um, and the next question is, um, birders are concerned about the potential damage to one of the district's best shrubland bird areas, such as Camp Pine Woods. So um, we have been working closely with our ecologists um, and um, we'll that question was, or comment was from Benjamin, so we will get back to you, Benjamin, as we continue to refine our site plans um, for our camping master plan. I also wanted just to show you um, just where you can find more information about these two plans um, and my contact information. Uh, you can reach me um, via email, telephone. Um, we're going to be posting a uh, the um, recording of this webinar um, on our website later next week. And it would be great if you have any more questions, I'm happy to answer them.
or comments? Um, Laura Perna asked, how would you characterize your outreach to the Hispanic community? Um, well, Laura, we've been working um, closely with a lot of community-based groups, and um, we've been focusing on um, our existing relationships and trying to build new relationships, especially through um, institutions like Chicago Public Schools, other schools, um, local hospitals, um, and wellness groups. But we would love more help in reaching out to um, broader um, constituents. It is, I, Laura also mentioned that it's a very important and growing constituency, and we couldn't agree more. So I think um, trying to build the relationships with um, our diverse constituents throughout Cook County is um, a top priority for this administration, and we feel um, that we're trying, and we, but we also know we'd love to have more help and build more relationships. Um, so Tony Anderson, oops, let's go back to that more question. Tony Anderson asked, are campsites and nature centers incorporating green technologies into the plan, um, promoting sustainability? That's an excellent question, Tony. We are um, looking very closely at not only green technology, but potential off-grid technology. Um, and so this is another priority. We have um, two LEED certified buildings, um, Little Red Schoolhouse and um, Camp Sagawa or Sagawa Nature Center are both LEED certified um, buildings that the county has been, uh, has constructed over the, in the last um, seven years. So we are committed to that um, and I don't have a specific outline of what type of technology that we'll be using but it's something that I'm um, very personally interested in and we'll, um, we hope to um, improve our sustainability um, opportunity as we're doing more building construction um, and more site restoration and looking at how we can do a better job at um, doing stormwater management um, in our parking lots and um, through other opportunities like that. But we're always open for suggestions. Um, Jackie Ulrich asked, when will people be able to start camping? Well, people can start um, can camp in the um, Forest Preserve District right now, um, but these are primarily focused on youth groups. We hope to have the camping um, plan um, completed, as we said, next month, and um, construction started later in 2013. So ideally, it would be great to have maybe some of the more primitive sites being open for summer of 2013, but I can't guarantee that. So more to come. Um, Tony said, compost bin, wind turbine, solar panels, I think those are all great suggestions. Um, Benjamin wrote, we appreciate that these plans have been scaled back to realistic levels. These are encouraging. We have a couple concerns, but we think we can work with the district. That's great news. We're really appreciative of those comments. Um, what were the difficulties in locating the campground um, site in the central region of the county? That's a great point, John. Um, we do try to have a diversity of locations when um, identifying recreation amenities. Um, and we try to make sure that there is a mix of um, recreation opportunities throughout the um, county area. The district has limited, um, has the least amount of holdings in the central part of the county. And most of those areas um, are, are more developed and um, or are highly sensitive. So they, um, we did not find a, an ideal camping site, um, but we feel strongly that um, the sites that we did propose will provide quality experiences um, for all of the residents throughout Cook County. Um, so Laura mentioned some resources on the Clean Energy Foundation and DCEO, and Laura, we're looking into all of those, so those are great suggestions. Um, Jan Arnold asked, what was the location you said the next dog grove is going to be open next year? Jan, this is something we're still looking at through this process. Um, we've been trying to um, uh, ensure that we've completed all of our analysis of peer agency reviews, regionally um, um, citing opportunities, and um, really understanding you know, uh, how to best um, move forward with our dog, off-leash dog um, areas. So more to come on that. I don't have an answer for you today. Any other questions or comments? 
Great. Well, I really appreciate everyone's um, participation today. Uh, I hope that I was able to answer all of your questions and comments. Again, this presentation will be on our website. Once it gets posted, I will send everyone who participated an email with the um, location so you can share with your colleagues um, and other folks who may be interested. So uh, again, thank you very much. We appreciate your time, and I hope to see everyone um, on January 23rd for our public meeting.